we are so back. So back. We have somehow, somehow become political commentators. Falcas, I'm staying in the, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in the shadows until today. So, would, have you not done a video commentating about the economic platforms of the 2024 election because you're scared, or because of something else? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think it's it's not of as interesting to me as it is to you. I don't feel as passionate about it as you do. I think. I think that's that that shows a lot about the future, considering you're an MBA student currently, probably doing more classes about economics and finance, and you're also a CPA. Important to note. I'm a CPA. Um, Just for me, I still haven't found a, a way to get passionate for the for politics in the United States. I agree with you, especially for me that I don't vote yet, but everyone can say that every single election is probably going to be one of the most influential elections. This, this election, I think, is incredibly important. One, because it's, it's the first time in probably 200 years that you know the past records of both candidates because Trump served as president and Kamala has been serving in the current administration. And number two, because economically, a lot of interesting things have been going on. It's been the first time that the Fed has decreased rates since, uh, since the financial crisis in 08 and 09. Uh, we've had inflation that has been coming down, and both candidates have been very aggressive with the things that they're proposing. The biggest, not the biggest example, but a recent example is Trump yesterday did an interview with Bloomberg, which I really liked because the guy was pushing him pretty hard, talking about tariffs and his economic platform. And yep. one of the things that he said was that tariff is the most beautiful word in the <laughs> English dictionary. Um, did you hear anything about their interview? What do you think? What are, what are your thoughts? I, I did not hear anything of that interview. Honestly, Falk, all I've, I, all I've been learning from this election is through you. You've done an excellent job covering both economic policies. You should check out those videos here. Um, but yeah, not, not that much. Obviously, uh, I understand, like you mentioned in your videos, the textbook theories of why tariffs might be bad. But what I always think about is the behind the scenes. There has to be something his advisors are telling him behind the scenes that are making Trump say that maybe like it's something in practice, that it's not in the textbook definition of tariffs, or something that has happened before that is telling him that the tariffs he wants to put in place are going to be good for the economy. I'm sure it's not just him just saying that just because it came to his mind, you know? I'm pretty, I hope at least that it's a prepared no, no. statement. And I, and I agree with that a lot because when I'm making these videos, I always try to think, like you said, kind of like you say is why is the other side so against this or why is it so this side so pro that? So the answer with tariffs, when you analyze it, and I learned this studying recently, is tariffs is a mechanism that's usually used for mostly national security and preserving industries that are pretty young and they want to have succeed in the economy. Yep. Very clear example is Huawei. Remember the brand of, of cell phones? Yep. I think that was completely banned in the United States because the United States realized that that was a defense issue, not because they cared about the brand. It's just it was an issue because they were like infiltrating conversations and things like that. That's in the, that's in the national uh, and interest more, side. more recently, I think Biden put tariffs for a lot of the electric cars from China. And for Right, because they want to try to push, you know, the industry that we have here with Correct. Ford and Tesla to, to, to get bigger. Yep. Trump understands that. And even, and like I said in my video, even Biden has been putting tariffs. The issue I have with Trump's platform, and even he says it in the, in the conversation now, is he's taking it to another proportion. Like he's, okay. pulling, a, he's pulling a Trump. Like he mentioned <laughs> in this conversation that he wants to put even a 100, 200, or even a 300% tariff in cars. <laughs> Um, okay, that's the issue. Do you think? Do you think that, like, putting myself in Trump's shoes, do you think that could be, might be a political move, but it could also be like a negotiation tactic of scaring foreign producers to do act in a particular way. I, I like that, and, and I hadn't thought about that because that's kind of like a game theory that you're hinting towards one side, so you maybe can do the plan that you have without actually implementing it. I like that I hadn't thought about that. I think besides having people in the insights that might have a point of view that I don't know about economics, um, they both know, and this is what I said in my last video, that there's a lot of things that they can say that sound really good, 
And people are not going to question them because they don't know better. And right. that's where I went to my explanation of against Argentina of him saying, hey, we want to accomplish something. What we need to do to accomplish that thing, which is lowering inflation, is really hard. You guys are not going to like what is coming up, but it's what we have to do. So I think it's a combination of both. And then when you see with Kamala's side, so the way I explain it and you watch my video is yep. they both have something in similar, which is that when it comes to fiscal policy, and that's a side that the president and Congress can control, they both want to run deficits. Yep. Trump wants to uh, spend more, uh, sorry, Trump wants to tax, tax less, so he wants less money coming in. Kamala doesn't want to tax less, she wants to tax more, but she wants to even spend more. So on Kamala's side, the issue is that she just wants to go crazy with the spending. Um, okay. And she, you know, she wants to keep adding to the national deficit. Both sides kind of want to do that, and they have a lot of good plans that sound amazing, but there's not that much evidence about how they can actually fund them. So for Kamala's side, it's not the tariff. For Kamala's side, it's we want to give money to everyone. Yeah. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about, about her proposals? So she has a few. Um, the, the big one that a lot of people have been talking about is that she wants to give $25,000 to people that want to buy a house for the first time. Yeah. I personally have been looking to buy, well, not looking to buy a house because I don't think I can afford <laughs> anything in Miami. So but poor. just looking at opportunities. And <laughs> there are a lot of programs out there, like I said in my video, yeah. that already help you. And just giving everyone $25,000 can first of all increase prices by a lot and two is where are we gonna get that money from and is that is that a check that she's gonna give you twenty five thousand dollars for you to buy a house or is that a tax deduction that you can take once you buy a house it would be it would be uh it would be a check that probably won't go to you it would just go straight to the bank when you're trying okay. to get a mortgage okay so as you know when you're trying to buy a house if you put less than 20 percent down of payment Uh, the, the bank giving you the mortgage requires you to pay uh, private home insurance yep. for the mortgage because you didn't put enough money down. This is one of the things that can help you against that and try to push. So let me, let me get to something a little more beneficial uh, for both sides because I've been kind of slamming both Trump and Kamala. <laughs> I didn't like what she said about just giving money. But okay. something that I did like about Kamala, which is not in the let's spend money, but let's help people work and do better is – helping and you know giving a little bit of a few tax cuts and helping smaller businesses in the issue of <clears throat> excuse me trying to create more houses so people can buy more okay uh, so there's more supply so people can buy more i think that's better i i saw i saw another one that she proposed that it's the the one that she's gonna give tax deductions to entrepreneurs starting a first business and i don't i don't know if you've seen that one And I'm not sure if it's specific, because she just released one for specifically African-Americans, but she also has one for everyone. And I think it was like a 50,000 tax deduction if you're starting a business. And I think tax deductions, I don't know, I don't know, honestly, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert, but I think tax deductions are probably better in the short term because it's just a deduction that you're giving people, whereas with the house payment, you're actually writing a check for $25,000. So that's money, that's cash, that's leaving that you have that the U.S. government has to come up with. A deduction is just money that the U.S. government never receives. Have you thought I about agree. that? Like what? Yeah, what, that's, what's better. That's the way. That's the way I see it as well. The one with the smaller businesses. I mean, we, you could say that we have a small business, and even if we got a tax deduction now, I feel like small businesses at the beginning don't make much money. Maybe don't make much money. So I feel like it would be beneficial. I don't know if it would help that much. But following what you said, and I said this in my tariff video about, about Trump, a policy that I do like from Trump in the tariff side is instead of penalizing people from coming in, from bringing imports into the U.S., it's better if we give them benefits if they produce here in the U.S. So there's one that is also pretty aggressive that Trump is proposing, which is decreasing corporate taxes to 15% That's if insane, they produce yeah. in the United States. So if you're a huge corporation, like for example, Ford. Ford is one of the companies that comes pretty often because they produce a lot of, you know, the F-150s, which is kind of the traditional pickup in the United States. Yep. Most of it are manufactured in, in Mexico and then brought back into the United States. If you tell Ford they're going to get a 6%... 6%. The deduction in their taxes, they're gonna sit down and do the math and saying, is this better than actually producing outside of the United States? Yeah, and I think and I, they, they you give the power to the company for them to decide. You yeah. don't force them to do something. I like that a lot. So you're you, what you're saying is, if a company produce, so let's say Apple produces in China, they're gonna pay 21. 
if a company produces, a competitor of Apple produces everything in the United States, they will pay a 15% corporate tax rate. Right? Instead of 21%. Instead of 21%. Yes. Now, the question is, what is considered producing that's, in the United States? I was about to ask that question because <laughs> that's, that's when everything like, goes crazy. I have a friend here in the NBA where she advertises her brand. She makes a product that her product is made in the United States, but all the pieces come from outside of the United States. So do you have to actually build the product in the United States? Do the, does the raw, raw material have to come from the United States, from uh, manufacturers of raw material in the United States? And then proving through that paperwork to the government, imagine all the paperwork. Like for a company like Apple that, whose supply chain is massive. Imagine all the paperwork, all the audits that, would have, that you would have to submit and then that the government would have to audit. I think on paper, it's, it's an amazing idea. It's just, I don't know if it's feasible, you know? No, the, the feasible parts are hard, but all the things that you mentioned could be a point in pro of the policy that Trump is proposing because if you make people come to the United States and make their products here because they get tax benefits, even if that costs them more money in auditors, even if that costs the government more money in, you know, in having people actually audit that work, that's new jobs that you're creating for the same benefit of what you're doing. So you in that sense, it could, it, could be, it could be beneficial. Okay, yeah. And going back to the tariff discussion, for electric cars, Biden implemented, I think, uh, let's say a 50% tariff on electric cars. That definitely benefits Tesla and all the Ford and all the car manufacturers in the United States, right? Yes, but you know who's the person that it doesn't benefit? The consumer. The consumer. But it, so my question is, does, does it, what if it increases the GDP or like the, the value that, it creates more value than it, than it destroys for the customer, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I do. The issue is that just from what Trump has alluded to as far as tariffs, most of the economic analysis that have come out have said that in the balance of what you're comparing, the consumers hurt more than it actually benefits the Than it the creates value. That's interesting. And yeah, they that's said that I think it would increase it would increase consumers' annual cost this amount. I don't. I think it was like a thousand or six thousand. Okay. I, I know it's less than six thousand. That's interesting. Um, Got to so check out the other other booth. What the booth economics have to say? Another yes, one. Another yes. Nobel winner came out. I haven't. I haven't seen. I haven't seen if Booth has come out recently saying anything about the election. I know. Um, Warden came out saying that Trump's policy programs were worse than Kamala's. Oh, and wow. Trump went to Warden. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the things that Kamala said during the during, during the, the debate, debate, right? And then and then so, and, and then Trump said that he was a student of Warden, and they had great professors, I think. Right. Yeah. And some that some that weren't that good. Well, that's, <laughs> a, that's an example, and that's one of the things that is an issue with these policies is. Kamala did, hasn't spoken that much about her economic policy because I think she's also made a lot of it on the run. But what she did do is that she endorsed the majority of Biden's policies and she endorsed the Green Book, which is the book that they released with economic plans for, for this year. So that book, which is I think like 250 pages, has a lot of detail and a lot of policies, but she hasn't cleared it. And then on Trump's side, he has a lot of good ideas that he also put in his policy, but he also hasn't talked about it that much. With Trump, it's a little easier because he has done more interviews than Kamala. Kamala has been kind of not doing as many. Okay. But in both sides, you know, in an ideal situation, we would have had a debate where they sit down and they talk about this policies a little more extensively <laughs> than the vice presidential debate, but it wasn't, it wasn't the case. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember telling you that for the vice presidential debate, it was a, a breath of fresh air. I don't know if that's the expression, but it was crazy to see how two people were actually talking about like different policies instead of just like calling each other names and making fun of each other and you know maybe hopefully in the next election we'll have some decency and we'll we'll be able to learn more about policies instead of just the show the showman of Trump and then that triggering the the adversary yeah hopefully neither one of them is is around but i am i am pretty interested about election night uh, the Wall Street Journal came out with an article today, like explaining the states that they come, they have around. Um, apparently, uh, apparently they always say this, but like whoever takes Philadelphia, uh, whoever takes Pennsylvania might win it all. 
So we'll see. I'm pretty excited, even though I can vote, and it has been fun analyzing both economic platforms. And well, I will say, say one thing. Go ahead. No, that I don't think it's going to be as bad as I say. No, I don't think it's going to be bad, but even the craziest policies, the majority of them are not going to pass because, like I said, one, they're politicians. They promise a lot of things that never happen. Yep. And two, um, most of these things have to pass Congress, and a lot of times it just doesn't pass Congress. So I'll ask the expert in talk to see what... To, to end the video, what would you say are the two more, the one for each candidate, the policy that can like change the short term like economy of the United States? Would you say that for Trump it are the tariffs? And for, for Trump, oh, for either the, the best or the worst? Yeah, yeah for like, Trump I say, if he does every single thing he's talked about, which a lot of things are crazy, for Trump, it will be tariffs okay. that will impact the economy by a lot, especially three to four, five, six years down the road. And your, yeah, your prediction if, is it would impact it negatively. It would impact it negatively if he implements every single thing he's talked about, which okay. a lot of them are crazy. Like if he says, he, he said that he doesn't want a Toyota to be in the United States because he's going to put a 100, 200, 300% <laughs> okay. tariff. That would be insane. And for Kamala, what would be the... For Kamala, if she can actually detailly implement the tax policy that I did my video on of taxing every single person at a 21%, sorry, every single earner above $100 million in net worth, their ordinary income at 21% and taxing on realized gains, I think that's going to have a drastic impact in the economy. Taxing the unrealized um, gains, right? Taxing the realized gains. Un unrealized. Unrealized gains. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be of that would at be twenty twenty one percent. That would be twenty five percent. Sorry, that will be that will be pretty crazy, um, and it will be pretty crazy the way they implement it because the ideas they have are pretty insane to actually see implemented. That would be an absolute nightmare for all the high net worth individuals. Their cash management would become a nightmare. Just having to yeah, because most of them are not liquid. So having to like liquidate stuff to be able to pay for those taxes would be a complete nightmare so that would be that would be interesting i feel like i feel like you wouldn't be able to catch a lot of those things because a lot of people have them in trust entities and like showing who actually owns each one will be hard and that's one of the ways they will probably get away okay. with it but if they were to implement that that will take a lot of work from the government and it would be interesting to see yeah. so awesome stuff falk i want to congratulate you it's been a great series are we ever going to see political falk back again or is, is he retiring from the game. <laughs> I, I I like economic political folk. I will never go into politics because I just don't know about it. Economics is something that I study and I okay. like. Um, but I will. I want to do a video on inflation that I've been drafting for some time. Let's and, go. and a lot of people have liked it. So we've I'll, I'll continue. It's been a, a successful bit. series and you can whoever wins you can evaluate their job as as they work. So looking forward to seeing more economical political folk. They're probably not going to do any of the things I've been analyzing, but we'll see. That's politics. Well, that's politics. Hopefully they do so we get more content. Yeah, there you go. All right, excited watching this in the future and seeing who actually wins. GG's. Peace.